Okay folks, before actually getting into After Effects, there is one very important path that I want to make sure you uh, are going to be able to use it. And it's called the Motion Vector Path, especially for this project that we have this very uh, severe motions and also these small cubes and all of this motion a path like motion vector is going to be extremely essential when we go inside after effects and this way we're going to have very accurate uh, motion blurs using the motion vector pa path that we exported out of cinema 4d to after effects i mean we can simply go ahead and uh, render motion blur out of cinema 4d and just our render would be with motion blur and we're not going to change it inside after effects but it's going to add to our render time and uh, in after effects we can get very close to uh, very accurate motion uh, blurs uh, if we export the motion vector data so if you go to your uh, multi-pass and right click here you get this uh, path called motion vector you see uh, not a lot of uh, really details but if you go ahead and actually just make sure if we go ahead and render it I'm gonna just go ahead and quickly make the output to something like 500 just so we have a quick render here uh, just make sure the output is set to current frame now let's go ahead and render it out so if you go to your layers and single layers you see you got this layer called motion vector and as you can see the color varies based on the uh, movement that the object has if you take a look let's see <laughs> You can see how the color varies. Some parts are kind of green, some parts are kind of uh, a yellow. And as you can see, the small cubes that are kind of moving a bit uh, faster, you can see are a bit more greenish. And this really helps us to have much more accurate motion blur. So make sure you actually export this motion blur data out of Cinema 4D. Now let's go ahead and actually uh, close uh, Cinema 4D here. Here we are inside After Effects, and let's go ahead and import those uh, renders. Let me double click. Uh, in your project folder, you should have this uh, data provided to you, obviously not in PSD because it's going to be very, very huge. You can see a lot of these guys, uh, but I'm going to provide different passes uh, for you uh, basically on uh, MP4. Uh, so you can go ahead and import those data it's not going to be that accurate and you need to if you really want to go uh, to be very accurate you can go ahead and uh, render your own file but uh, if you want just go ahead and uh, use this data I'll be uh, you're gonna have this uh, file just go to your uh, render folder or multi-pass folder in your project file and you're gonna see these files and here is the uh, .aec file that we're going to be using and uh, as you can see here it is and uh, if you open this uh, thing you're gonna have every uh, pass uh, and every light and every camera basically uh, that we have inside Cinema 4D will be imported uh, to After Effects so let's go ahead and double click on this and wait a bit uh, okay, folks, now when you do that, you can see you have this folder which contains your passes, your special passes, the object buffer, the motion vector, the depth pass, and also the main render. And also you got these uh, reflection, shadows, ambient occlusion, and diffuse. And you got this composition also, which basically uh, it couldn't be easier than this. If you just double click on it, you can see you are getting your uh, renders and uh, everything is just ready to go. Okay, you see there? Let me just go ahead. Uh, you might have this some problem. Let me go ahead and select uh, all of the layers here and get them back. Uh, okay, let's hold on shift. Let's hold on shift. I'm going to hit N and trim the cam to the work area. And here is what we have, guys. Uh, as you can see, basically, this is a multi-pass render. Basically, we have our diffuse, our shadow, and if you take a look, we can go ahead and actually do that if we want. So let me just actually go ahead and do this for you. I'm going to go ahead and delete all of this guy so we have a nothing, and we're going to combine our passes manually. So I'm going to my passes. The first pass you need to add is obviously the uh, diffuse. So let's go ahead and add the diffuse. And... The next thing we're going to be add is the shadow and it's going to be multiplied because we need the dark pixel basically 
Okay. Um, the next thing we're going to be uh, we're going to need is the let's go to uh, global illumination. So let's go ahead and add this. And the next thing is obviously our ambient occlusion or reflection doesn't matter. Let's go ahead and add the reflection and make it to be added. And finally, our AO or ambient occlusion, which is going to be multiplied. There we go. We can go ahead and change the uh, reflection and ambient occlusion if you wanted to. Okay, there we go. So here's the render and it's not similar to what we had inside Cinema 4D at all. So in order to solve this problem, if you go to your project setting, you basically need to linearize your workspace inside After Effects. So let's go to our project setting and down here at uh, the depth, let's go to change it to 16 and the working space, I'm going to uh, change it to sRGB and also I'm going to linearize my uh, workspace and hit OK. And as you can see now, it's very, very much more similar. Now let's go ahead and uh, create a quick background. Uh, I'm going to create a new solid here and that's going to be our background. Turn off caps lock if you have it turned on. So let's see. And as you can see, we got all of the nulls, all of the uh, lights. I don't think I'm going to be using these nulls and we didn't export them in our original, in our uh, uh, you know, uh, design that we did together. So there we go. Okay. Now let's go ahead and add a quick uh, uh, gradient ramp. So let's go ahead and apply this. And let's see. We're going to radial, hold on shift, and a second one. Let's go to something like this. And the color that we're going to be using. Let's see, get this here. Let's go ahead and use maybe this color. And also let's go ahead and use this color, maybe just a bit brighter. So something like this, it doesn't have to be really, really accurate, but as you can see, it's not too bad at all. And uh, let's go ahead uh, and start working and adding different effects. The first thing I'm going to add is actually depth of field. So let's go ahead and find my depth map, which is this guy. So let's go ahead and I'm just going to rename it to the depth map. Okay, and then I'm going to um, pre-compose it and I'm going to name it the just depth map really, depth map comp. Great. And let's go ahead and create a new adjustment layer. So layer, new adjustment layer. And let's pull it up. And this is going to be our uh, depth of field. Let's go ahead and add the depth of field effect from Flush Loft. Depth of field. Uh, OK, you can go ahead and use the uh, camera lens blur effect in uh, which is a native plugin inside After Effects, but I'm going to use this commercial plugin, a very powerful plugin actually. So let's go ahead and apply this. Turn off the caps lock. Let's go ahead and define our depth layer, which is the depth map comp. And let's go ahead and increase the blur to something like eight. And let's define where we want the depth to actually be. So I'm going to click on the select depth, and somewhere about here it's going to be a good space, good place. And as you can see, we got this sort of jaggedness that's going on around. And, uh, and that's a huge problem with all the depth of field map. And there are different solutions. But let me just show you a very simple one. I'm going to select my depth map here. And what I'm going to do is to apply a very quick uh, fast blur. So let's go ahead and apply a fast blur. And let's go ahead and increase this value to something like 35. So it's getting very blurry. But uh, if I turn on this uh, repeat edge pixels and if I get back to my original project, you can see we are going to have a much more nicer uh, and much more realistic uh, depth of field effect going on throughout our uh, data. And the next thing is the motion uh, blur. Let's go ahead and create a new adjustment layer. So layer, new adjustment layer. Now let's go ahead and uh, put it uh, maybe here. 
let's go ahead and name it our motion blur and we also uh, you remember the motion vector that we talked about the, at the beginning of this lesson so let's go ahead and use it so let's go this is our motion vector path so let's go ahead and use it I'm going to type in motion map and I'm going to pre-compose it also motion map comp perfect now let's go ahead to our motion blur I'm going to use another plugin which will which is real smart motion blur pro from uh, from revision so let's go ahead and use it uh, so this is what we have at the moment let's get closer I'm going to uh, in the alternative motion source I'm going to use my motion map blur and let's see uh, about 0.5 actually is enough let's see where some of the parts okay we got this nice motion blur okay lovely and let's see gonna get a bit have this so you see here is we have this peak rotation and uh, we have a nice motion blur basically okay very cool now let's go ahead and add some particle to our environment. I'm going to uh, create a new solid, and let's. Uh, I'm going. I'm. Uh, I know I used a lot of plugins that are commercial, but unfortunately, uh, particular. And here is the trap code particular. And I'm going to change my emitter to box, and let's. Uh, emitter size let's go to something like 5,000 5,000 5,000 maybe and the particle per second I'm going to have about 5,000 perfect and also I'm going to my emission extras and I'm going to increase my pre-run so the par particles already be there at the uh, frame zero and then let's go ahead to the particles here and the size something like 1.5 okay and the size random maybe something like one one the opacity random let's go something like 50 and uh, okay nice stuff and there we go we got this nice particles uh, around and also the particles are kind of uh, reacting to our depth of field maps which is very very cool because you can see these particles are uh, in focus and as we uh, you know uh, as they f get uh, away from the camera they become more out of focus and more blur and that's about the uh, particles and finally I'm going to use these uh, lights you remember those uh, lights uh, that we created for export now we have about four of them and when you export you basically import your AEC file and you open the composition you can see you got all of these lights and we can actually go ahead and use them so I'm going to create a new solid and apply a bit of optical flares so let's go ahead and tap in flare and I'm going to let's go ahead and pull it up and let's uh, search for the optical flare from video copilot so let's go ahead and open it up and we're going to change the source type to be a track light and we're going to uh, go to the options and okay let's go to our motion graphics and find something nice you know it's really up to you and I'm just going to be as quick as possible let's go maybe select these bad boys here and uh, you can see it's so much at the moment but let's go ahead and change this to untransparent and they're gonna be uh, kind of less effective but you can see adding them kind of helps a lot to make the scene to be much more complex and nice got this nice motion blur and the depth of field and optical flares really helps to sell the shot and uh, let's see great very nice as you can see it's very close to the uh, main project that we have and uh, as you can see the compositing isn't that hard but there are some principles that you need to follow so that's about it and uh, let's see what we can do here 
and perfect so we got the light we got depth of field we got a motion motion blur and maybe we can go ahead and apply some um, you know overall changes and um, uh, for example we got this object buffer so let's see object buffer one object buffer two object buffer three let's see what object buffer these guys are okay let's object buffer four uh, for example, this is object buffer 420. So what I can do, for example, I can go ahead and create a new uh, adjustment layer. Okay, let's go there, create, select the composition here. And let's go ahead and create a new adjustment layer, new adjustment layer. And let's go ahead and name it maybe uh, CC for those two numbers for 20. Okay, for two and zero. Okay, let's go ahead and apply a simple hue and saturation. So there we go. And let's go ahead and maybe if we want, we can go ahead and colorize everything. <laughs> let's go ahead and disable that. But let's make sure this is going to be applied to only our letter two and zero. I can simply use this mat. So let's go ahead and get this map here and make sure the uh, this is uh, the uh, adjustment layer is going to be just uh, affecting the 2 and the 0 so let's go change its uh, track mat to luma mat okay now it's just affecting the 2 and the 0 and i can go to my adjustment layer and really do whatever i want so you can go ahead and totally uh, change the feeling of our design you see and we can go ahead and change the background if we want and it's really up to you so that's why we actually export those mats to have absolute control over our renders so that's about it and i hope you love it i'm going to actually turn it off but i just wanted to make sure you understand this okay folks it's finally finished and uh, we are done as you can see uh, we still can work on it and possibly we can go ahead and reduce the opacity of our optical flare but generally speaking we have this very cool and awesome motion design and you can go ahead and create something similar and add it to your portfolio and whenever to when you send it to a studio they're gonna love it definitely uh, and I hope you uh, liked it I hope you enjoyed it uh, it was a pleasure for me personally to be with you throughout this course and I hope you uh, learned something and I uh, would love to see your projects if you uh, did something based on this uh, tutorial please come to our website and uh, send me a link to watch it and it's gonna be uh, really great uh, and also we do have a lot of other courses on our website you can go ahead and uh, check them out at mographplus.com so here if you go to mographplus.com and in our premium tutorial we can you can see uh, except for this course, we have four other courses, Advanced 3D Motion Graphics and Cinema 4D and Real Flow, which is a really great tutorial series if you want to learn about the integration between Cinema 4D and Real Flow. And it's a really useful course uh, for the guys who are who want to integrate the fluid into their workflow and integrate the uh, basically uh, Real Flow's powerful tools. Uh, and uh, we're going to talk about lighting and stuff like that. We have this very great comprehensive introduction to V-Ray 4 Cinema 4D. Uh, you can uh, check it out. It's a very uh, powerful and uh, very detailed course, about eight hours of video tutorial. And also you got this Creative at one 3D Motion Graphics uh, in Cinema 4D and After Effects, the Box Studio project, which is a really a uh, useful course and I uh, personally invite you to go ahead we're going to be talking about the camera calibration and so uh, many cool stuff and also the uh, other course that we have is this gift project which we create a very cool project together uh, and uh, definitely it's going to be very useful so so I hope you enjoyed this course and this series of tutorial and uh, hopefully you learn something and uh, see you in the next series of tutorial and always check our website at mographplus.com because we're going to be adding more cool tutorials every month and you're definitely going to find something that's going to uh, suit your needs. So uh, see you there.